The claim frequently is made that urban heat islands are making a major contribution to global warming. In this video, I will show that this claim is simply false. The term urban heat island was coined to illustrate the fact that the average daily temperature in urban areas typically is about 3.5 degrees Fahrenheit or about 1.9 degrees centigrade higher than in surrounding rural areas. The basic reason that the urban heat island contribution to the overall warming of the planet is small is that the surface area of the earth that is urbanized is quite small. At present, only about 3% of the Earth's land area is urbanized. And since only about 30% of the Earth's surface is land, that means that urban areas cover slightly less than 1% of the entire Earth's surface. So what we really are asking is how much does that extra 1.9 degrees centigrade of warming in the urban areas contribute to the global average temperature of the entire planet? To get the answer to that question, we need to understand how global average surface temperatures are computed. To obtain this global average temperature, climate scientists divide the surface of the Earth into a grid such as the one shown in this image. In the image, the surface of the Earth has been divided into grid elements that are 10 degrees of longitude by 10 degrees of latitude. When they compute the average global surface temperature, climate scientists use smaller grid elements, ones that are five degrees of longitude by five degrees of latitude. Four of these smaller grid elements would fit into each grid element shown in the picture. Now, since there are 360 degrees of longitude and 180 degrees of latitude on the sphere, the total number of these smaller grid elements is 36 times 72, or 2,592. To compute the upper limit on the contribution of heat islands to the average global surface temperature, we will assume that 1% of the grid elements have a daily average temperature that is 1.9 degrees centigrade more than the average daily temperature in the rural parts of the grid element. Most likely, the average daily temperature in those grid elements isn't that much warmer, but this assumption will allow us to put an upper limit on how much the heat island effect can contribute to global warming. The calculation of the contribution from the urban heat island effect to the overall global average surface temperature is a bit complicated. We'll go through it step by step. We need to add up the average daily temperature values in each of the grid elements and then divide by the number of grid elements. 2,333 grid elements have average temperature values that include no contribution from the urban heat island effect. We will designate the average daily temperature in those grid elements as T sub GE, where the T sub GE value differs from one grid element to another. Note that T sub GE refers to the contribution to the grid element temperature from all causes other than the heat island effect. Now, 1% of the grid elements, or 259 grid elements, are assumed to have an average temperature value that's equal to T sub GE for that grid element plus 1.9 degrees centigrade from the urban heat island effect. T sub GE varies from one grid element to another, but to get an upper limit on the contribution of the urban heat island effect to the overall global temperature, we will set T sub GE in all the grid elements to 15 degrees centigrade, which is about the current overall daily surface temperature for the Earth. 
When we do that and we carry out the calculation shown on this slide, we find that 1% of the grid elements that have urban heat island effects add 0.19 degrees centigrade to the overall global average surface temperature as we would expect. This is slightly less than a 2% overall effect. In reality, the contribution to the overall global average surface temperature from the urban heat island effect is substantially less than a 2% effect. The reason for this is the varying size of the grid elements. As you probably noticed from the figure, the area of the grid elements is largest closest to the equator and smallest closest to the poles. Since very little of the world's population resides in the high latitude areas closest to the poles, the 1% of the grid elements with urban heat islands contains significantly more than 1% of the surface area of the planet. The obvious question now that we know that the contribution to global average surface temperature from the urban heat island effect is very small, less than 2%, is what is causing the rise in global average surface temperature that we have been observing essentially since the start of the Industrial Revolution as shown in this figure. The answer to that question is that since the start of the Industrial Revolution, we have been burning fossil fuels at a very rapid rate, thus emitting copious amounts of greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane, into the atmosphere. The role that urban heat islands play in global warming is inconsequential by comparison. It's, it's far less than the 2% upper limit that we have calculated. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please post them in the comments section and I will do my best to respond. I also invite you to take some time to watch some of my other climate related videos. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it greatly if you would hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching.